I wanted to do my best to make the best visual I could possibly make for you to understand how this works. <laughs> Hey Sterile Processing Professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the difference between positive and negative air exchanges. I'm also gonna explain what air exchanges are, as well as how many air exchanges are required for each area of sterile processing. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go on, hit the subscribe button. Go on. So when it comes to anything having to do with temperature, humidity, air exchanges, negative versus positive pressure, all that stuff falls under the guidelines of ASHRAE, American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. Yeah, that's a big acronym. Whatever happened to HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning? So first off, I wanna explain air exchanges. Like what is an air exchange? So if we envision this room that I'm in right now, let's say it's 1,000 cubic feet of air. So a single air exchange pumps in 1,000 cubic feet of air to exhaust the existing 1,000 cubic feet of air. So it's a one-for-one -one trade air exchange. So if this room had, say, four air exchanges per hour, that would mean every hour the air conditioning system would pump in 4,000 cubic feet of air to push out four times the 1,000 cubic feet of air. So that's a lot of air movement. And the reason there's so much air movement is because we wanna keep all the dust and the microbes as little as possible in the air. So we're gonna suck out existing air through filters, and then we're gonna pump in new air through filters to constantly be cleansing that air. It's a great reason why your HEPA filters need to be serviced continuously. So as you can see from this snippet, here are all the air requirements for the three areas of SPD, assembly, decon, and sterile storage. As you can see, the clean areas of assembly and storage are only four air exchanges per hour. And since decontam is much dirtier, it requires six air exchanges. Okay, so now that we've covered what air exchanges are, that'll make it much easier to describe and show you what negative and positive air pressure means, not only in a single room, but as a department as a whole, how it works together. One more time looking at this snippet, you can see that the clean areas are positive pressure and decontam is negative pressure. Now I spent a lot of time on these graphics because I wanna give you the best possible chance to fully understand how the air movement works within sterile processing. In this first graphic, I'm just gonna show you a standard hospital waiting room area. And the reason I wanna show you this first is because I want you to understand air exchange just as it's occurring in a balanced room. Whatever comes in is what goes out. There's no positive, there's no negative pressure, it's just balanced. And when you think balanced, think of the word homeostasis. So homeostasis is the tendency towards a relatively stable equilibrium. The laws of nature seek to equalize. If you take a glass of ice water and you put it in a room temperature room, that ice is eventually gonna melt and the water is gonna warm up until it reaches room temperature. It's gonna equalize with the room. Same thing with like a cup of coffee. If you put a cup of coffee down, you wait long enough, sometimes one minute, it gets too cold to drink because it's cooling down to the room temperature. And to give you a visual of this in the sense of pressure, if you blow up a balloon and you let go of the end of it, that's going to equalize the pressure by releasing all the air out so the balloon is equal pressure inside as it is outside. And that is because of homeostasis. So like I said earlier, once I show you this balanced room, a positive room, and a negative room, I'm then going to put it all together so you can see how it works as a department. It's also really important to understand there's a lot of math involved when it comes to positive and negative air pressure and balanced air. And I don't know what all those math configurations are, but I'm gonna do my best to show you how it works. It may not be 100% accurate, but you'll get the general idea. Okay, in this first graphic, I wanna show you the waiting area ventilation, which is balanced air. Remember, it's not positive, it's not negative. It is equal supply and equal return. I want you to picture each one of these arrows as a single air exchange. The arrows have numbers which represent which air exchange they are. So one, two, three, and four. I will also display the hours so you can see how it all comes together with four air exchanges per hour. The arrows will come from the ceiling because that is usually where the supply vents are and they will make their way to the intake vent or what is called the return. 
supply air coming into the area and return air is leaving the area. Okay, here we go. So the air exchange comes in and becomes the air in the room. And as the second air exchange makes its way in, it becomes the new air of the room and pushes out the prior air exchange that was before it. And this continues all day, every day. Now, the reason this room is balanced is because the same number of air exchanges coming in is the same number of air exchanges leaving the room. Another way to understand balanced air is if you have a central air conditioner in your house, it doesn't require you to open a window or anything because what gets pumped through your air vents is what gets sucked through your return. Usually your return is like in a hallway or a main area of the house. Now I wanna to move to a positive pressure room and this will move in the same direction as the previous graphic, but what I want you to understand is that with a positive room, four air exchanges are gonna be coming into the room but not the same amount are gonna be exiting through the return. Four air exchanges will come in, but only three will be sucked out through the return. And because of this, it forces that last air exchange or that extra air to have to find a way to escape because the room is too positive now, so it's gonna find any crack or crevice to escape from the room. Usually that's like a door or um, if you have a pass-through window to decontam, that's another area where the air can escape. And when you enter the sterile processing department into a clean area, you should feel a little bit of a rush of air come at you because that's the positive air escaping out of the department. Um, I've seen Joint Commission do this a lot of times is where they carry a piece of tissue with them and they'll hold it at the edges of the door to see if the air is blowing or sucking to see if it's a positive or negative room. Another way to think of positive pressure is if you ever lived in a house with a um, forced air or what they call swamp cooler, where it's sucking air through the wet pads and pushing it into the house, you have to open a window for air to escape because it'll just increase the pressure of the house. And as soon as you go open a window, if you already have it on, it's gonna be like whoosh, it's gonna rush the air out. It's the same thing when you're in a house like that and you go to leave and as you're shutting the front door, it slams it right behind you because all that air is trying to escape as fast as possible. Now let's move on to a negative pressure room. So I'm gonna show you decontam. And with decontam, we have six air exchanges coming into the room because remember, decontam is a dirty environment. But decontam is actually gonna be sucking out seven air exchanges through the return. Now since the supply is only providing six and it's sucking out seven, that means it has to pull air from somewhere else. So if there's doors, the pass-through window, it's gonna be sucking air through those to go out the vent. Just like when you go to leave decontam, there should be a rush of air that comes at you because decontam is sucking air in. Okay, now that we have seen a balanced room, a positive room, and a negative room, I wanna put the entire department together so you can see it in real time how everything works together. And I wanna make this graphic really easy to understand. So as you see, there's decontam, there's assembly, and then there's sterile storage. And the sterile storage is the only one that has an exit door. Now that's not how a department works, but I wanted to do this so you have a really uh, detailed way to see how this air moves through each area and how they actually contribute to each other. Okay, here we go. All areas are performing their air exchanges. The clean areas are getting four supplied air exchanges and decon is getting six. The clean areas are getting three air exchanges taken out through the return and decon is getting seven taken out through the return. Now let's look at each area. Starting with the sterile storage, it is taking in four and losing three. That fourth air exchange has no place to go, so it needs to escape the room. The next door area of assembly is also positive pressure with equal force, since they both get four and lose three, so they can't exchange air between each other. So the extra air exchange in sterile storage has to escape out that exit door. Now in assembly, the same thing. It gets four and loses three. So that air exchange has to go somewhere. It can't go into sterile storage, so it either goes out an exit door, or what usually happens much easier is it makes its way to decon to be sucked out through decon's return vent. And lastly, decon. Because decon is negative pressure, there's more returning air than supplying. So decon either pulls air from doors exiting to the hallway corridors outside the department, or it pulls from an adjacent department such as uh, prep and pack. Decon's return vent happily takes that extra air exchange. I know this graphic can be confusing because there's a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of arrows happening, but if you watch it a few times, it'll start to make sense. 
you'll see that the hours all move at the exact same time. Decon's arrows move a little bit faster because there's six per hour versus the four. But you can also see that as the assembly fourth air intake goes, it has no place to go out the return vent, so it makes its way to decon, probably through a pass-through window, and out the decon vent. And you can see sterile storage, since it has four coming in and that last one can't go anywhere, it has to go under that door through the crack. Hopefully all the editing of this video actually came together and made sense. I wanted to do my best to make the best visual I could possibly make for you to understand how this works because it's very important that your department air exchanges and positive negative pressure and temperature humidity, all that is on point. All of it has a very important role in keeping your area clean, safe, and keeping your instruments sterile. And now that you know how all this works, you can test and make sure that each area is performing correctly, but you can also challenge your hospital engineers if you're seeing there's no positive negative pressure and they're saying, well, the gauges say it is, you can say, I doubt it. And you can actually show some evidence that something needs to change. Don't forget hospital engineers have a lot of really cool tools where they can test your particulate counts in your air. They can test the temperature humidity. Sometimes they have a central system. Sometimes you need to install actual hygrometers in your area so you can read the temperature and humidity. Whatever it is, you need to make sure that's being recorded because whether or not it's central and your facilities are supposed to be tracking your temperature and humidity, it's your responsibility to make sure that's occurring. And if it's not occurring, it's on you. All right, any topics or videos you wanna see, please put them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you all in the next one.